everyone has an ego. A healthy, strong ego is the basis of a successful, driven individual. But what happens when an ego goes too far? When can someone really be called an egomaniac? For all people, that uh, unless you have some sense of yourself and then some sense of importance and individuality of yourself, you have enormous problems. You have enormous problems in life coping, and you have enormous problems in relating to others. Egomania is a, an interesting term which is not used by psychologists or psychiatrists. It actually is something that goes back to the 19th century, the idea of being essentially mad in narrow areas of life and, and behavior. Egomania, I think it is the layman's term for narcissistic personality disorder. Everybody does need a degree of narcissism and in fact narcissism relates to success in life. There's a direct relationship, the more narcissistic you are, the more uh, financial material success you have in life. Psychologists have defined a list of nine characteristics associated with narcissistic personality disorder or NPD. Many of us display these traits but learn to control them. But for those who cannot, like a pressure gauge, danger arises when the needle hits red. Well, I just don't respect her as a journalist. I have no respect for her. I don't think she's very good. I think she's highly overrated. Uh, you know, she, she gets out and she starts asking me all sorts of ridiculous questions. And, you know, you could see there was blood coming out of her eyes. Uh, blood coming out of her wherever. Well, Rosie O'Donnell's disgusting. I mean, both inside and out. You take a look at her, she's a slob. She talks like a, a, like a truck driver. When you look at her and when you see the mind, the mind is, is weak. I don't see it. I don't get it. I never understood. How does she even get on television? Rosie is a very unattractive person, both inside and out. Rosie's a person that's very lucky to have her girlfriend. And she better be careful or I'll send one of my friends over to pick up a girlfriend. Why would she stay with Rosie if she had another choice? I think really there's a sophomore quality that is entertaining about Mr. Trump. But I am worried. I'm very concerned about him having him in charge of the nuclear weapons because I think his response, his, his visceral response to attack people on their appearance, short, tall, fat, ugly, my goodness, that happened in junior high. Are we not way above that? Would we not all be worried to have someone like that in charge of the nuclear arsenal? Jake, Jake, Mr. Trump, I never attacked him on his look, and believe me, there's plenty of subject matter right there. That I can tell you. Uh, there's this tweet that, that, that uh, Josh Groban put to music where he says, sorry losers and haters, but my IQ is one of the highest, and you all know it. Please don't feel so stupid or insecure. It's not your fault. Well, and this is what I've said about Trump. For all narcissists, there's a certain grandiosity, there's a certain entitlement, there's a sense of a lack of empathy. But in, with Trump, as in all things with Trump, it's a question of scale. There's, there's the largeness of Trump, the loudness of Trump, the great brain Trumpness of Trump. But there's a smallness too, a pettiness, a petulance a certain, certain resort to schoolboy taunts. The very fact that he calls his, op his opponents stupid, that he uses terms like total loser. These are very And this is all terms. symptomatic of narcissism. It's, it's symptomatic of the brittleness of narcissism mm -hmm. because one thing to keep in mind about narcissism is that it's often what psychologists call the mask model of narcissism. It's a sense of profound grandiosity that's designed to cover up its exact opposite. The narcissist is addicted to a drug called narcissistic supply. Narcissistic supply is a fancy term and it describes all forms of attention, both positive and negative. Narcissists are very utilitarian, very pragmatic and very flexible, multi-purpose machines. They have what I call X-ray vision. They are able instantly to diagnose the weaknesses, vulnerabilities, soft spots, predilections, fears, hopes and emotional needs of everyone around them. Uh, yet another sign that when economic times are tough, things can get ugly. A new report suggests that right-wing extremism may be on the rise in this country. 
Department of Homeland Security says these groups might be using the recession and the election of the country's first African-American president as tools to recruit new members. They say there's no specific information on planned violence by domestic right-wing terrorists, but real estate foreclosures, unemployment, and tight credit could all lead to a fertile recruiting environment. Stop being gilded, domesticated garbage. Stop being weak. And when you see a threat come down on you, deal with it. Become a human again. Stop being weak. We got a bunch of criminals coming down on us. God. Murdering scum. I want to get humanity awake. I want to get our forces up. And I want to bring these people to justice. And you know what I mean. You know what I mean. I want to unleash humanity. Not have a bunch of con artists, pot belly, chicken neck, pieces of garbage running our world. More importantly, they act like effeminate, cowardly chicken necks because they want to train you to act like that. They want to train you to be weak. Last year, the Southern Poverty Law Center counted 1,360 of these groups, an all-time high. Only 149 existed when Barack Obama won the presidency in 2008. A careful observer can use a respect scale to find how many citizens get an even break. As a community moves towards despotism, respect is restricted to fewer people. A community is low on a respect scale if common courtesy is withheld from large groups of people on account of their political attitudes. We're not gonna change. 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 It's the most disturbing theme of the 2016 election so far has been the incident of violence and verbal abuse hurled in the direction of protesters at Donald Trump rallies. Over and over again, with increasing frequency over the past several months, often seemingly encouraged at the podium by Trump himself, these incidents are happening against the backdrop of two other equally disturbing phenomena. A growing list of avowed white supremacists, neo-Nazis, and white nationalists who have thrown their support behind Donald Trump. Black Lives Matter protester at a Trump rally in Birmingham, Alabama, was kicked and punched by Trump supporters as Trump yelled, get him the hell out of here. Trump later defended his supporters, telling Fox News, quote, maybe the protester should have been roughed up because it was absolutely disgusting what he was doing. Um, I want to turn to George Wallace's daughter, Peggy Wallace Kennedy, who told BuzzFeed she compared her father to Donald Trump, saying, quote, there are a great deal of similarities as it relates to their style and political strategies, the two of them. They have adopted the notion that fear and hate are the two greatest motivators of voters. She went on to say, quote, they both can draw a crowd and work up a crowd. My father was a very fiery and emotional speaker and was able to tap into the fears of the poor and working class white people. But Peggy Wallace Kennedy said her father may have actually been less extreme than Trump. Well, Donald Trump, let me say this. My audience, I'd say 90% supports you, okay? Right. And you definitely uh, have, have shown your knowledge of geopolitical systems. We problem in this country, it's called Muslims. We know our current president is one. Right. You know he's not even an American. We need this First question. This is the first man. Question. But anyway, 
We have training camps growing where they want to kill us. Mm -hmm. That's my question. When can we get rid of We're going to be looking at a lot of different things. And, you know, a lot of people are saying that, and a lot of people are saying that bad things are happening out there. We're going to be looking at that and plenty of other things. A lot of people say, no, he's just doing it to get votes. He's doing it to get votes. I want to read you guys this. It's from the very first article the New York Times wrote about Hitler. This is from November 21st, 1922. They said, uh, several sources confirmed the idea that Hitler's anti-Semitism was not genuine or violent. It was merely using anti-Semitic propaganda as a bait to catch masses of followers and keep them aroused, enthusiastic, and in line. You must feed the masses with cruder morsels and ideas like anti-Semitism. The Nazi vote had dropped to 33% in the November 1932 election. It looked like their support had peaked. But powerful figures on the traditional right still felt they had to negotiate with Hitler. They too wanted to eliminate democracy and destroy the communists. And without Hitler and the Nazis, they had no access to mass support. A former chancellor, the aristocratic von Papen, came up with a deal. Hitler could be chancellor if he, von Papen, was vice-chancellor, and there were only two other Nazis in the cabinet, surrounded by more traditional conservatives. The theory was, Hitler would be tamed. As a result, Hindenburg offered Adolf Hitler the chancellorship on January the 30th, 1933. Von Papen crowed, we've hired him, and the new cabinet posed for the cameras. The Nazis would later try and rewrite history to say that Hitler became chancellor simply because it was his destiny. But in reality, Hitler had been helped into power by economic circumstance and the support and miscalculation of others. I'll support the Republican nominee. Senator Cruz, yes or no, you will support Donald Trump if he's the nominee? Yes, because I gave my word that I would. Governor Kasich, yes or no, would you support Donald Trump as the Republican nominee? Yeah, I, but, and I kind of think that before it's all said and done, I'll be the nominee. I think Islam hates us. There's something, there's something there that there's a tremendous hatred there. There's a tremendous hatred. We have to get to the bottom of it. There is an unbelievable hatred of us. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. We would never minimize the threat of, you know, Islamic terrorism in this country. Sure. You know, 9-11 is, you know, the Pearl Harbor of our generation. At the same time, there have been many more right-wing plots than there have been Islamic plots over the, since that period of time. You, you look at what's going on, you have a president that doesn't even want to talk about, you know, the radical uh, Muslim stuff. He doesn't want to mention the word. Well, they want to blow up our cities and they want to blow up our country. That's our number one problem. The U.S. has become a dumping ground for everybody else's problems. Thank you. It's true. And these are the best and the finest. When Mexico sends its people 
They're not sending their best. They're not sending you. They're not sending you. They're sending people that have lots of problems, and they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. And some, I assume, are good people. But I speak to border guards, and they tell us what we're getting. And it only makes common sense. It only makes common sense. They're sending us not the right people. It's coming from more than Mexico. It's coming from all over South and Latin America, and it's coming probably, probably from the Middle East. Going to have a deportation force. Now he is praising a program whose official name considers what's currently considered an offensive slur, Operation Wetback. It was inhumane, um, it was abusive to uh, Mexicans that had come into the United States at our request to work during World War II. Humanitarian complaints were raised as some deportees were sent back to Mexico aboard what a congressional investigation described as a slave ship. Many of the Mexicans that were rounded up had their heads shaved. Many were beaten and abused. There's incidents in 1955 of uh, Mexicans um, that died in the desert because they were uh, pushed out of the United States. I want to mention again about the Trump uh, immigration plan. I mean, it's just really amazing what's going on. And, uh, and I, you know, I, I kind of, my own view on Trump's evolving. I've said from the beginning that I think his campaign is good in the sense that he's bringing these issues to a discussion, which we have to have in America. And he's continuing to move the envelope further. And I think he understands the real sentiment of America. Like I say, I don't know whether it's intentional or sincere or whether it's simply a means, because this is his only path to the possible nomination of the Republican Party and his only path possibly to the presidency. So although we can't trust him to do what he says, you know, the other, the other Republican candidates won't even say what he says. So he's certainly the best of the lot. White people in this nation and the world have got to unite. We're going to stand proudly and honestly and courageously, and we're not going to stop until we win. Should there be a database system that tracks the Muslims here in this country? There should be a lot of systems beyond database. I mean, we should have a lot of systems, and today you can do it. That interview and that story have had a, a big impact today, as you can see from all the headlines about it. Um, also from responses like this one from one American Jewish group, which said in response to this Yahoo News article, quote, registering everyone of a certain religion to a list? We've seen that. It doesn't end well. The reason why European Americans are supporting Trump in very great numbers is the same reason they supported me. You've got to go back to Louisiana. In 1990, I ran for the United States Senate against a long, quote, conservative Democrat. In that race, I got 45% of the overall vote, 65% of the European American vote. I mean, I want a landslide of European American voters to be their United States Senator. The only reason I lost because you have a total black vote and then, of course, the liberal media said, well, the blacks saved, you know, our people for themselves. And the same thing happened, similar thing happened in the race for governor, where I got over 60 percent of the vote in that race. And, you know, it's the same issue. It's the same ideas. It's the same values. I'm glad to see Trump is revitalizing some of this, even though this has already started. The truth is we've been working on this. My YouTube videos now get 1.2 billion views. The support we get on our websites is amazing. Uh, we are growing. There is a rising European American consciousness. Will you unequivocally condemn David Duke and say that you don't want his vote or that of other white supremacists in this election? Well, just so you understand, I don't know anything about David Duke, okay? I don't know anything about what you're even talking about with uh, white supremacy or white supremacists. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Did, did he endorse me or what's going on? Because, you know, I know nothing about David Duke. I know nothing about white supremacists. And so you're asking me a question that I'm supposed to be talking about people that I know nothing about. But the, I guess the question from the, from the Anti-Defamation League is, even if you don't know about their endorsement, there are these groups and individuals endorsing you. Would you just say unequivocally you condemn them and you don't want their support? Well, I have to look at the group. I mean, I don't know what group you're talking about. The degree to which white nationalists, white supremacists, and the white power movement have latched onto Donald Trump's campaign, it's starting to become an unignorable problem for his campaign. And then today came the reports that Donald Trump's son, 
uh, who's an active part of his father's campaign. He allegedly gave an interview to a white supremacist radio host, a radio host who spent three hours on Saturday broadcasting his white power radio show from inside a Donald Trump event in Memphis. In the current issue of Vanity Fair, the author Marie Brenner says that you read from Hitler's collective speeches, My New Order, and that these are speeches that uh, you seem to admire. What's your reaction? Do you have this book? Do you have these speeches? It is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Trump, uh, Trump is connecting with people. Uh, he's connecting to their dark side. He's connecting to uh, all their fears, uh, the same way Adolf Hitler did. Uh, in Hitler's day, it was the foreigner, the immigrant, the Jew, uh, the liberal, the communist, the, the, the other among us. Hitler united the German people, uh, whether they knew it or not at the time, on, the, on that basis, on the basis of we, we have enemies within the country who are eating us alive, who are destroying us, who are, who are killing us. We have to stop them. So dass natürlich in Deutschland allmählich der Eindruck entstand, ja, Bolschewismus und Judentum ist dasselbe, so ungefähr. Obviously, being Jewish is very, very important to me. I'm very proud of my heritage. I never thought we'd see the day in our country when a communist, because that's really, you think about it, when a communist is the leading Democrat, we're going to have a communist against an entrepreneur. I like the entrepreneur, right? This socialist slash communist, okay, nobody wants to say it. And nobody's heard the term communist. But you know what? I call him a socialist slash communist, okay, because that's what he is. <laughs> Listen, Bernie got to get saved. He got to meet Jesus. I don't know. He got he to have a come to Jesus meeting. <laughs> Sit in the Europe. <laughs> To the Freikorps, who celebrated in Munich after the suppression of the Räte Republik, the Jews were convenient scapegoats, held to blame for all the country's ills. And the Freikorps had the support of right-wing officers in the regular army, like Captain Ernst Röhm, a man with a simple philosophy. Since I am an immature and wicked man, war and unrest appeal to me more than good bourgeois order. Brutality is respected. The people need wholesome fear. They want to fear something. They want someone to frighten them and make them shudderingly submissive. Hitler said that he was the strong man who could solve the economic crisis. At the head of a dynamic party that promised it would destroy Germany's internal enemies and rebuild the country around national unity. We're That's fighting a very politically correct war. Yeah. Well, we see that and the other thing money. is with the terrorists, you have to take out their families. When you get these terrorists, you have to take out their families. Why, did somebody tell ISIS, look, we're going to treat your guys well. Would you please do us a favor and treat our guys well? They don't do that. We're not playing by, we are playing by rules, but they have no rules. It's very hard to win Isn't when that's that what the case. separates us from the savages? No, I don't think rules. so. No, we have to beat the savages. And therefore throw all rules out. We have to beat the savages. By being savages. No, we, well, look, you have to play the game the way they're playing the game. I'd like you to answer the question, how do you feel about water party? I said, I feel great about it. I feel, I feel great. I said, I feel great. And then I said, something that got me in a minor bit of trouble because it wasn't politically correct. I said, 
but I think we should go much, much, much further than Waterboy. General Pershing was a rough guy, and he sits on his horse and is very astute like a ramrod, right? And this was a terrible problem. They were having terrorism problems just like we do. And he caught 50 terrorists who did tremendous damage and killed many people. And he took the 50 terrorists, and he took 50 men, and he dipped 50 bullets in pig's blood. And he had his men load his rifles, and he lined up the 50 people, and they shot 49 of those people. And the 50th person, he said, you go back to your people, and you tell them what happened. I would bomb the shit out of them. I would just bomb those suckers. And that's right, I'd blow up the pipes, I'd blow up the refi, I'd blow up every single inch, there would be nothing left. When the unemployed Dr. Joseph Goebbels found his cult figure, he felt called by God. This man was his messiah. Diary entry, November 6th, 1925. And those big blue eyes like stars. He is pleased to see me. I am filled with happiness. He is there. He shakes my hand. Then he talks for half an hour with wit, irony, humor, sarcasm, earnestness, fire, passion. This man has all the qualities of a king, the born champion of the people, the future dictator. The longing for a strong man. The yearning for strong words. Engste Mitarbeiter des Führers schauen auf ihn und finden in seinem Gesicht Kraft und Stärke und Zuversicht. Ein Mann von wahrhaft säkularer Größe. The historians and the political scientists and the journalists who treat the subject of fascism usually write from a centrist ideological perspective, from the political center of the spectrum, which means they usually ignore the link between fascism and capitalism, just as they tend to ignore the entire subject of capitalism itself when there's something unfavorable to say about it. Instead, they dwell on the more phantasmic components of fascist ideology, the nihilistic revolt against Western rationalism and individuality, uh, the, the irrational appeals uh, to mass submission to a leader and all that. And fascism was those things, but along with its irrational appeals, it had rational functions. It was a rational instrument for class domination and for the preservation of the existing capitalist system. A power scale is another important yardstick of despotism. It gauges the citizens' share in making the community's decisions. Communities which concentrate decision-making in a few hands rate low on a power scale and are moving towards despotism. Today, democracy can ebb away in communities whose citizens allow power to become concentrated in the hands of bosses. What I say go, see? I'm the law around here. <laughs> You're all fired. All four are fired. The test of despotic power is that it can disregard the will of the people. It rules without the consent of the governed. If a community's economic distribution becomes slanted, 
Its middle income groups grow smaller, and despotism stands a better chance to gain a foothold. Speaking of dictionary, uh, defined fascism as, quote, a system of government that exercises a dictatorship of the extreme right, typically through the merging of state and business leaderships, together with belligerent nationalism. Uh, there is a trending retweet of yours. You retweeted somebody from Il Duce 2016. It was a Mussolini quote. It said, it is better to live one day as a lion than 100 years as a sheep. That's a famous Mussolini quote. You retweeted it. You like the quote? Did you know it was sure. Mussolini? It's okay to know it's Mussolini. Look, Mussolini was Mussolini. It's okay to know. It's a very good quote. It's a very interesting quote. And I know it. I saw it. I saw what, and I know who said it. Uh, but what difference does it make? Hey everybody, Fascist Lemming here. I full, uh, as of this moment, I think that it is in the interest of the white race to support Donald Trump. Hey everybody, Fascist Lemming here with some awesome news. Check this out. Uh, Donald Trump uh, tweets white genocide. He re Okay, so he retweeted uh, at white genocide uh, TM and it's a picture of a Jeb Bush a homeless saying vote Trump so he retweeted a graphic that had some crime statistics now let me tell you what it said USA crime statistics for 2015 blacks killed by whites 2% blacks killed by police 1% whites killed by police 3% Whites killed by whites, 16%. Whites killed by blacks, 81%. Blacks killed by blacks, 97%. Uh, those numbers, needless to say, are totally made up. In fact, they're so made up that the source, the Crime Statistics Bureau in San Francisco, uh, that isn't even real. I'm Jared Taylor with American Renaissance. I urge you to vote for Donald Trump this follows a report from a Muslim woman who was ejected from a Trump rally in South Carolina on Friday with other protesters. The woman, Rose Hamid, was wearing a hijab. She told CNN she experienced a, quote, hateful crowd mentality as she was being escorted out including from one man who questioned whether she had a bomb. She had a t-shirt that said, I come in peace. And over the weekend, a CBS News reporter named Sopan Deb tweeted that a Trump supporter had asked if he was taking pictures for ISIS and then began filming him. It wasn't the first time this has happened. At a Trump rally last month, Deb said, a man came up to him and said, go back to Iraq. Deb says he has never even been. Raw Story writes that a South Carolina jury was apparently unswayed by a neo-Nazi's vote for Trump sign, and they convicted the former KKK leader of sexually abusing two girls. Three young women testified during the relatively short three-day trial that Kreis repeatedly molested two girls who were between the ages of 10 and 14. Kreis is 61 years old. He is a one-time Aryan Nation leader and a Christian identity pastor. He held up a sign during the entire trial expressing his support for Republican presidential frontrunner Donald Trump. And we're going to begin with a father and his two young daughters, the Kreis family. They have appeared on our show several times over the past two and a half years. Take a look at this. I am Jewish. My daughter is Jewish. Are you saying to me that if given the chance, you would kill my daughter? In a second. That, that Holocaust cost myth that you're teaching all these uh, children, innocent children in the, in the cesspools you call universities, indoctrination I, centers, my the grand... Holocaust myth. In the Bible, it tells us that when Yahweh returns, that's what I call my God, uh, he's going to mark every Jew and they shall be killed. John 8, states that they are from the devil, the devil's children. And you listen to this and you buy that? Yeah. Why? Because it says it right in the Bible. And if you read the Bible, then you can understand it. As supporters waited in line to hear Donald Trump speak tonight in South Carolina, word started to spread about his latest idea, banning all Muslims from entering the U.S. Donald Trump is now saying 
Muslims should not be allowed to enter this country until the U.S. figures out what's going on. Do you agree with that? Yes, I do. Why? I don't want them here. Who knows what they're going to bring into this country? We're going to bombs, ISIS, what? They need to go. He's not the only supporter backing Trump's call for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the U.S. In fact, no one here we spoke with had a problem with the plan. That's a very prudent idea, and I think that he's done due diligence when he makes that statement. We have to protect our American citizens first, and the vetting process in the whole program lacks integrity. That's not true. In fact, the vetting process run through multiple agencies is vigorous. Trump's harsh words for ISIS have also energized his supporters. On Fox recently, Mr. Trump shared part of his plan for how he'd bring down ISIS, including targeting terrorist families. You have to wipe out their homes where they came from. You have to absolutely wipe them out. It's the only way you're going to stop terrorism. Are you in favor of uh, bombing terrorist homes? Absolutely. Absolutely. People will continue to reproduce and they will raise children in their beliefs. Somebody just needs to go in there and take control of this. I just think it's it's going rampant and I'm worried about America, worried about our safety. They're getting in. They need to be stopped. We don't have time or money for political correctness. Want to tell me why? In favor of sending illegal aliens back to their home countries. For somebody important, you can make changes. He's not a politician. He's a man that knows how to make things right. With my opinion. Thank you, sir. Well, That's right. Your opinion? My opinion? Yeah. Yeah. I want Donald to make me proud to be an American again. So you can't say illegal immigration. That's my main cause, and plus the man speaks out of word. He talks like a uh, blue collar guy. Take taking care of our it. jobs, and they're killing our economy, and they're killing our, uh, our, our, our economic system. Donald Trump knows when to sound incredulous or forceful. He has good comedic instinct. You could even call him witty. But you can't call him smart or well-informed. The best salesman could sell you a TV without knowing anything about it. Because the TV isn't what matters. What matters is you. And if you are an American citizen who, for years, has listened to politicians sound sophisticated while accomplishing nothing, you might just be primed for something that is everything they are not. The Nazi party proposed little in the way of detailed policies, but it offered order, discipline, and the personality of Adolf Hitler. I wish to testify about the Feldenstein case because it was the most significant trial of the period. It is important not only for the tribunal to understand it, but for the whole German people. But in order to understand it, one must understand the period in which it happened. There was a fever over the land, a fever of disgrace, of indignity, of hunger. We had a democracy, yes, but it was torn by elements within. Above all, there was fear, fear of today, fear of tomorrow fear of our neighbors, and fear of ourselves. Only when you understand that can you understand what Hitler meant to us. Because he said to us, lift your heads, be proud to be German. There are devils among us, communists, liberals, Jews, gypsies. Once these devils will be destroyed, your misery will be destroyed. Was the old, old story of the sacrificial land. 
What about those of us who know better? We who knew the words were lies and worse than lies. Why did we sit silent? Why did we take part? Because we loved our country. What difference does it make if a few political extremists lose their rights? What difference does it make if a few racial minorities lose their rights? It is only a passing phase. It is only a stage we are going through. It will be discarded sooner or later. Hitler himself will be discarded sooner or later. The country is in danger. We will march out of the shadows. We will go forward. Forward is the great password. And history tells how well we succeeded, Your Honor. We succeeded beyond our wildest dreams. The very elements of hate and power about Hitler that mesmerized Germany, mesmerized the world. We found ourselves with sudden powerful allies. Things that had been denied to us as a democracy were open to us now. The world said, go ahead, take it. Take it, take Sudetenland, take the Rhineland, remilitarize it. Take all of Austria, take it. And then one day, we looked around and found that we were in an even more terrible danger. The ritual began in this courtroom, swept over the land like a raging, roaring disease. What was going to be a passing phase had become the way of life.